What's going on everybody? With the release of the new Rambo movie, it's time to rank these bad boys. I reviewed all four of them back in January when I was doing the Rocky movies, the Expendables and Escape Plans, my Stallone month. So you can check out all those reviews. On, I'm going to leave a link so you can go see those reviews. All right. I didn't do the. If I would have known this was coming out, I probably would have just waited to review them. But whatever. What's done is done. I already reviewed them. Go check them out if you want. They're very quick. Five to eight minute reviews. So not wasting too much time. So let's wait. Let's not waste any more time with this intro. Let's just get to it. What is at the bottom of the list? Rambo 3. Starting off with the things that I do like with Rambo 3 is that it is just easy. No, not much plot. All of them are, but it's just lots and lots of action. I think this movie set some record back then, like 1990-ish, somewhere around there. Not, don't, don't, um, actually me in the fucking comments. Um, actually, it was like 1989. I don't give a fuck. We get Kurtwood Smith in here. I like that 70s show, so it's always a positive to see him. And I like Troutman in this movie, because in the first two movies, he's just a hype man. You're gonna need one more thing. What's that? A good supply of body bags. He's just a hype man, and this one, we, he's like in distress, he has to be saved, and then he gets to fight back a lot more, there's a lot more character to him, he's comical in some parts, so I liked Troutman in this movie, that was the only like different thing that made it stand out a little bit from part two, but that's really it, it's just over-the-top violence, over-the-top action, not gory, when, I'm, when I say violence, I don't mean like gory or anything, I just mean like lots and lots of shooting in the second half of this movie, but in the first half, it's kind of boring, I remember this movie being kind of boring, it was just the same thing of part two. It was part two repeated again. It was kind of like the same effect that a lot of people see, like that Child's Play had, like part two and three. It was like, you know, it was already done. So people just kind of go like, oh, well, it's, I've already seen it. It's Rambo 2. Just like Child's Play 2 and Child's Play 3. It was like, well, three is just a repeat of two. And that's how I see Rambo 3 with two. It's like, it's just the same thing. It's a lot of the same story beats. It's the same, like, macho, big Russian bad guy. Not a memorable bad guy at all. I like that J John Rambo finally gets hurt in this movie. He has to, like, put gunpowder in his wound and light it on fire. In the second one, I don't think he got hurt much at all. Maybe he got tortured a little bit, but he never really got shot, ever. In this one, he finally, like, gets shot, so I like that. But I didn't like the setting in Afghanistan. It's just, it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. It's... Not beautiful, like the forest or the jungle. But anyways, let's just move on to my number four. What is my number four? It is Rambo, First Blood, Part 2. They didn't carry that First Blood name around after that. Rambo 3 dropped it. Rambo 4 just dropped numbers completely. And then Rambo 5 dropped. There's still no numbers, but it's First Blood again. Except now it's Last Blood. But this one is like the start of like action hero Sylvester Stallone. It's the one where it just it went balls out. It was a completely different type of movie from the first one, which was more of like a character study of John Rambo and the effects of war. This one is just like balls to the wall, drop Rambo back into the forest, the jungle where he's very used to and knows those parts and he knows how to survive out there. He We get to see him use his guerrilla warfare tactics and how to kick ass in Vietnam basically. We get to see him just kick ass the entire movie basically. It's, I think this was written by James Cameron, I believe. Jerry Goldsmith does the score for these movies, the first three. Good score in all three of them. Jerry Goldsmith does a lot of scores, especially in the 80s, like Gremlins, I think Aliens too. I like that there's a patriotic message at the end of this movie. He's like, I want what these guys want. And it's a very like cheesy, like last, like the final message is kind of cheesy. And there is like macho, like, Stallone moments where he's like saying cheesy dialogue like I'm coming to get you you should fear me but this is the introduction to bow and arrow Rambo in the first one he was just setting up traps in this one we get the bow and arrow and the explosive tip we get a little love interest she's not the best actress in the world it's pretty poor but I like that he gets a love interest so we get to see a little bit of emotion from him but Rambo 2 it's not a bad movie it's just one it's kind of like three except it, it did it first and it's not as overdone or cheesy as 3, and it's a little bit more tame than 3. Like, 3 is, like, fucking, like, balls of the wall times 2. But anyways, let's move on to my number 3, I believe. What is my number 3? It is the new movie, Rambo, Last Blood. I debated putting this at 2, but I think there's just some small things about Rambo 4 that I like a little bit better. Rambo, Last Blood, this is basically where I thought it was going to be before I saw it. I was like, this is probably going to be 2 or 3. And after walking out of it, yeah, it was two or three for me. So I might shift it 
if I rewatch them all again, like a marathon, I might change my mind. But this is where it's going for now, right in the middle. It's a very basic story, just like the, all the sequels. Go save this person, get revenge. That's it. So there's really no originality here like the first movie. But I like the new setting. I like there's a lot more emotion. There's actually a very emotional scene that almost got me crying even though I wasn't really that attached to the character, but obviously I was a little bit. They built that character up well enough for me to actually care just a little bit, just to get a little sad, just a little watery eyes. I got a little watery, I'm not gonna lie. I thought Sylvester Stallone did a pretty good job as Rambo. He's just as badass. You only even see his age. Sure, he looks older, but you don't see it in his performance. He's still whacking people with hammers. He's brutal. This is the most brutal, like, with just his hands. Just like he can do a lot more now with his hands, like fucking collarbone stuff. It's brutal, just like part four, but not on the same level. Almost, but not quite there. I love the whole like Home Alone thing they did. I thought it was smart to explain away how he's able to kill all these people. He's not young and agile anymore. He's kind of slow. He gets his ass kicked. He does get wounded. I like that. It adds realism to the story. Everybody's not just safe and everybody's gonna make it. Even the girl, like he goes to save the girl. It's like she hits a few bumps in the road too. It isn't like he just saves her in time. She never gets raped. She never gets stuck with a needle. It's real. It's realistic. They don't go for the happy, warm, sunshine ending. It's fucking gory. It's brutal. Lots of like rate, like slasher like deaths. Some freaking just limbs and heads being shot off. It's pretty freaking amazing. So number three. Last Blood. Number two for me is going to go to Rambo, which came out, I guess, in what, 2008? Seven or eight? Depending, I don't know. I think it was 08. And this movie is probably one of the most violent movies I've ever seen. There is like kids being thrown in fires, babies being bayoneted, there's a civil war in Burma, and he has to go save these missionaries that are trying to spread the gospel in the middle of a civil war because they're stupid. And that's a negative with the movie for me. It's just like the annoyance that I feel when I see these dumbasses. It's like, really? You're gonna go into a civil war with no weapons and just a Bible and hope that God's gonna put a shield over you? It ain't happening. This is the real world, bitches. But I like that he gets to fight with a group now and he's still just as badass as always. He uses that bow and arrow again. It's just over the top violence. People are being torn to pieces by machine guns. Heads getting sliced off, just like part five. This is this is part five, just a little bit more bloody and gory. It's again like part two and three and five, honestly, all of them except for the first one. Not a memorable bad guy. These movies aren't known for like the you know James Bond memorable like over the top like cliche bad guys. It's just like right like just random guy. You don't even know his name by the end of it or. At any point during it, you're like, who's that guy again? You're just here to see him kick ass, and he does. I like the added group of mercenaries that assist Rambo, and a couple of them die, which again adds realism. Not everybody's gonna make it, and I like the return to the jungle setting, like part two, and I just love the brutality of this movie. There's some good tension when they have to go and sneak into the jungle. Kind of reminded me of Call of Duty at one point, the way they have to like sneak into the this fortress, and like they sneak in, plant C4s, and then sneak back out. Has some like Call of Duty vibes. But overall, just another fun, just explosive, bloody action movie that everybody should watch. It's not the best, but it's damn near it. But what is the best? What is my number one? Of course, it is going to First Blood, Rambo, First Blood. Or is it just called First Blood? First Blood is original. It's just a simple story of a guy returning home from Vietnam, suffering from his PTSD, just wants to get a meal. He's Basically a bum, he's just traveling, he's trying to meet some old friends from Vietnam, and you got a dickhead cop who's the bad guy in this movie. Very memorable, Sheriff Tiesel, played by Don Hennig Brian Hennig Dennehy, I think that's his name. He was in Tommy Boy with Chris Farley. A memorable bad guy, some great freaking like dialogue, just great like emotion from Rambo at the end where he's like crying. There's an alternate ending where he like shoots himself and kills himself, which would have killed the franchise before it started. You get Troutman introduced in here and he's like the hype man. He's got iconic lines. There's lines that you can quote from this movie. And I just love that they put this guy into a new hell hole. Like he just escaped hell and now these cops are putting him through hell again. And he has to use his skills that he learned in the jungle to survive in the forest. And he's not a killer in this movie. He's taking them out at the legs. He's stabbing them in the legs with like these branches and stuff. He's not a killer. He's a good guy. He's not just 
murdering them all. This movie is just a great character study and it sends a positive message like respect the troops because back then in the 70s when the Vietnam War was like very heated and people were spitting on troops at airports, we needed a movie like this to come out in Hollywood and say, hey, listen, respect them, goddammit. But yeah, to me, First Blood, it's just the original. It's the one that started it all. It's definitely just the most memorable. It's not too over the top. It's very grounded in realism. It's not over the top. Some people might enjoy that about the sequels and like them more, but I like a more realistic action movie and revenge. And I like the revenge he gets on this town. He just destroys the town like, fuck you for putting me through this hell. And just seeing him trying to survive out in the wilderness, it's just very entertaining. It's a fun movie. Definitely a classic that everybody should see. So that's why it is my number one. By the way, all these movies are like, they're not like gaps in between them. Like one and then this one's all the way down here. No, they're all very close. Like one, like four and five, then maybe two and three down here. But anyways, that is my ranking of the Rainbow franchise. What is your ranking? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Don't just put them in the comments below. Explain your thoughts on each one. Why you think it's number one. Wait, why you think this one's number five. Explain yourself. Put your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button. And if you're new here and you want to subscribe, you can do so just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, I will feed you.